Well, it's a shame, huh? There's absolutely nothing noteworthy, nothing interesting going on in professional wrestling at all at the moment. Not at all. No, nothing interesting happened Sunday in Rosemont, which is not Chicago, at Survivor Series. Nothing interesting happened at all. Obviously, we know that's sarcasm, because we know it did, something big did happen. The return of the Viper, Randall Keith Orton! He's roided up and ring bonered and baby oiled and ready to damn go! Now, we will have time to celebrate the majesty and splendor, which is this return, and the inevitable path towards WrestleMania 40 in a once-in-a-lifetime match that deep down every one of you knows in the cackles of your soul you want or need. Instead, though, we'll parking lot that, and I'm here to talk about CM Punk. I guess it's a cold day in hell. Hell froze over. Never say never when it comes to WWE, right? And... For the most part, unless it comes to like getting Macho Man Randy Savage in the Hall of Fame while he's still damn alive, generally you could say, never say never. Ultimate Warrior came back into the fold. Bruno San Martino came back into the fold. Hulk Hogan, Hall, Nash. You know, I could go on and on, right? Guys that left with very adverse relationships. Unless you were nails, you were always had a chance to come back. Never say never when it comes to WWE. And when CM Punk returns Saturday night at Allstate Arena, I mean, that's that was a holy shit. This actually happened. Now, maybe it doesn't feel quite as big because you've seen CM Punk in AEW over the past year and a half or two in a wrestling capacity. But it's still different, right? Like, this is still, this is not even a WWE bias thing. This is a all the history and background and time there and all the bad blood there and he comes back there that's much different than going to a fresh place with new fresh faces new fresh leadership it's just different there is a lot of baggage there and it's not like cm punk doesn't bring a lot of that baggage with him still to this day which begs the question of will wwe ultimately regret bringing CM Punk back. And I don't want this to come across like a boot licking or ball washing type of answer. But the truth to me, to me, to me, my opinion is I don't think they will. And I suppose that depends upon your perspective, right? Like even initially, just the little bit of a bounce they got in terms of social media views and interactions and a slight bump in the raw rating the first week with having CM Punk back in the fold. People wondering what's CM Punk going to say. It gave him a bump already. Like in some ways, it's already a win for them. You bring in one of the biggest merch sellers in the industry still today. One of the few, you could argue, needle movers in the industry today. You already see that. You know this happens. Like, you can not like CM Punk all you want. That's fine. He has plenty of things to not like about him. But we should not deny objective reality. He is a bit of a needle mover. He is a money maker. He is a merch mover. Full stop. He is. So even if this guy comes in and in six months or a year, he's a disgruntled Philip Brooks again and you fire his ass, it's still worth it. Like even before you get to the creative opportunities that are there and the things they could do with him from a storytelling standpoint, a character standpoint, just from a business standpoint, even if he's only there six months and you have to fire his ass, that means you've had him at Survivor Series. You can have him in the fold for Royal Rumble. You can have him in the fold for WrestleMania. Like Those are some of your biggest shows of the year, your marquee shows of the year that you would have CM Punk there, it naturally is going to provide a bit of a boost in a variety of different ways. Additionally, there is always this angle, as unlikely as it might feel right now with CM Punk, and because we're talking about Punk, it certainly is reasonable to say this. This could be a situation where 
He split from his old girlfriend. He went to go live with a new girlfriend. All of a sudden, he started tasting what the new girlfriend was serving up and realized he didn't like it and that it was even worse. And as bad as he used to think the old girlfriend was, it wasn't so bad and he wishes he could have that back. And when he goes back, at least initially, he's going to act like he's appreciative. He's going to be happy with getting back to a more familiar situation because he thought the grass was greener on the other side for him and it really wasn't. And you know, when you talk about a guy like CM Punk, you could say when you observe people, you don't necessarily have to know them personally to be able to form, formulate some type of opinion. CM Punk is a guy that needs structure. CM Punk is a guy that at times needs flexibility but at times needs a firm hand. Tony Khan, you observe and you see, is really great in terms of the flexibility, not so great on the firm part. And that's a problem. When you've got a guy with a personality and attitude and mindset like CM Punk has, you need somebody that can have big dick energy to overcome him. You need a I'm the head motherfucker in charge type of vibe. Because even a dude like Punk eventually will respect it. He might piss and moan about it. But he would piss and moan about it anyway. But I think CM Punk can look at this and say, you know, it's a different time. I'm in a different place physically. I'm in a different place mentally. The WWE is a different place and a different environment, at least to some small degree. Like, I just don't see where the downside or real negative here is. If somebody says, well, you could come in and divide up the locker room. Nah, maybe. And if he did, he'd be pretty quickly shown the door. Because WWE is not afraid. They Nobody is above the brand. They will fire any fucking buddy. And I mean any fucking buddy if it truly comes to it. And if CM Punk gets too far out of line... They will drop him and future endeavor his ass quicker than you can even blink. They will. Right? So, you know, will he regret it? He could go here and work with guys that he hasn't worked with in a long time or ever. He could be put immediately into a spot where he could be main eventing night one of WrestleMania. He can work with guys like Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. You could tell a story there. He could come in and he could work with a Roman Reigns. You got so many new kind of feuds, so many new programs for a CM Punk. You could have him work with a Randy Orton. Someday you could have him work with a John Cena. You know, some of that is old, some of it is new, surely, but... You know, you've got two to three years worth of programs and feuds that I could just easily come up with off the top of my head. So not only does Punk come in feeling a little refreshed in terms of the WWE lens and the WWE brand and the WWE presentation, he's got a whole new wave of roster that he can work with. Or if he's worked with some of these guys in the past, they're much different characters and performers now, so it will still feel different, right? Yeah, like, it's hard for me to see how this is going to turn out really poorly for WWE. Now you could say, well, if he's a distraction, he causes fights or drama in the locker room. Okay, that's bad, but they would get rid of him very quickly. I think when you talk about WWE, though, unlike AEW, you have more people that understand it's about business and it's about making money and less about your fucking feelings and your emotions and your insecurities. Looking specifically at the Bucks and Page, Omega to a lesser degree. We know the elite, even if you like the elite, you have to admit they act kind of like man children at times. Really insecure and unwilling to put aside animus and bad feelings to make money. That's dumb. Number one goal of the wrestling business is to make money. And I even look and say, like, how many people right now actually believe that Seth Rollins was that legitimately pissed Saturday night when CM Punk returned to Survivor Series? Like, there are people that are confused, people that aren't sure. 
A lot of people that thought that was a shoot, that's a fucking work, you dummies. Like that right there, that little bit. Look at how much Seth Rollins and CM Punk, especially Seth Rollins, were able to sell you on this real heat. And there is real heat there. But that's when you can make the most funny. Real life issues sell. Real life issues draw money. So if it's drawing you in already, imagine when you've got a few weeks to build it up on television. Yeah, this, this was a move that WWE had to make. You had to go full circle on this. You had to give it a second shot. Why would you not? Do it while you still can. Do it before you would regret not doing it. And if it doesn't work out, you can cut bait just like that. And if CM Punk decides down the road he doesn't want to be there anymore, he can cut bait like that. It's one of these environments where neither side really truly needs each other. It's more about whether they want to work with each other. And I'm hopeful this time that it'll be a more fruitful relationship for all parties involved. It certainly could go sideways and it may down the road, right? But the drama and shit that happened with CM Punk and AEW is unlikely to happen anywhere near the same degree with WWE and we all know that. So this was a low risk, medium to high reward opportunity and WWE was wise to strike and go for it.